Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen, glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, the ages of all ages, Amen. So, we look at the temptation that the Lord took upon Himself for our salvation in, in the day's gospel, and we see how the Lord kind of like went through everything on our behalf so that we also could be triumphant and victorious. And the key I want us to take away with us today is to remember who we are. Remember who you are. So remember who you are is not just about your name or your career or your profession. And we're going to talk about that in detail now. So every time the devil threw a temptation to the Lord, the Lord will respond with something. So the first temptation, the Lord says, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The second temptation, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. The third temptation, away with you Satan, for it is written you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Shall you shall serve. What is the common repetition in each answer? The Bible? Hmm? The Lord. The Lord said. Stephen? God. Exactly. God. See, the devil always wants to shift your focus from God at anything. If he wants to tempt you with anything, he knows that he has to take your focus away from God. Because if you can take your focus away from God, then you start to fall. St. Peter was walking on water. As soon as his focus shifted from the Lord, he started to fall into the water. So, whenever the devil comes to you with any temptation, look back to God. Turn back to God. The devil says, look at this. No, 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 I'm looking at him. Look at that. No, I'm looking at him. No, look at this. No, I'm looking at him. Always, you have to bring back your own focus to God. This is your choice. And this is your capacity. You can achieve this yourself. St. John writes to us, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The Lord was incarnate for this, to redeem us, and to give us every victory against the devil. Like Father Bishoy Kemal says, the devil already lost, right? We speak about this, the church teaches us that the Lord tells us, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, have overcome the world. The world is already overcome. It's not like we still have to win this in the sense we have to do our share, we have to choose, we have to be faithful until death to receive the crown of life. This is true. But the Lord is already the king. It's not like we're unsure who's going to win at the end. The king, our Lord Jesus, or the devil. We know the Lord's going to win. So since we have that assurance and reassurance, we should choose accordingly. That's why St. James tells us, basically, since you know this, submit yourself to God. In other words, don't submit to the devil and his look at there, look at here, look at here, look at there. Submit to God, because he's the king. He's the king. At the end, as St. Paul says, this is the name before whom every knee shall bow. So why am I going to bow to bow the knee to someone that will not be king in the end? Him or any of his deceptions or his lies. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. Resist your resistance. Resist your resistance. You have to have some resistance, right? Resistance will strengthen you, build your resilience, and enable you to win and to be strong at the end. Isaiah writes that the Lord says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. So remember how we said at the beginning, remember who you are? So remember who you are, remember who you belong to, remember who you represent. He says, you are mine. We don't belong to anything or anyone else but the Lord Jesus. St. Paul says, you are Christ's, and Christ is God's. You belong to Christ. So if I belong to Christ, 
my goal, my ambition, my aspiration should be to be faithful to Him. I belong to Him. I belong to Him. Why, if I belong to Him, am I faithful to something or someone else? St. John again goes on to explain and says in verse, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we shall be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know Him. The world meaning those who do not want to know God. Beloved, now we are children of God. He's reaffirming this fact. We are children of God. Do we know this? Do we believe it? And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. So this is to keep me reminded, I am a child of God. I belong to God. I belong to God. I need to do the works of God. That's why the Lord condemned the Pharisees when He said, if you were truly sons of Abraham, you would do the deeds of Abraham. So we need to say, if I'm truly a son of God, truly a Christian, I need to do the deeds of a Christian. And hold on to this truth. We are children of God. And look at, it's St. John himself is amazed because what manner of love is this? How much love is this? That we'd be considered children of God? So, oh yeah, we're children of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. No, 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 no. It's way deeper and eternal than that. Much more than that. I take you back to the Old Testament. Jonah. Now Jonah was in the midst of this boat heading to Tarshish. Huge storm. Everything was going crazy. The mariners were panicking. Everyone was in a state of panic. They're about to be shipwrecked. So they don't know what to do. So they turned back to Jonah. And they said to him, please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? So Jonah looked at them and said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Do you notice that he didn't talk about his occupation? Did you notice he didn't talk about his family? When he said, I'm a Hebrew, it wasn't just to say his lineage. He was trying to emphasize the fact that he belongs to God. In the midst of the shipwreck, in the midst of this shipwreck and this total destruction, and he's ready to be thrown out of the ship, no problem, because he knows who he belongs to. He doesn't belong to the ship. He doesn't belong to the mariners. He doesn't belong to the whale that's about to swallow him. He belongs to God. This is intense. A couple of days ago, we celebrated the feast of the, the martyrdom of a saint named St. Saint Perpetua. Some of you may have heard of her. St. Perpetua is an incredible, incredible woman, incredible saint. And... One of the most remarkable parts of her biography, or her Synexarian, is that while they, they threw her in the middle and sent like a wild beast, a wild cow, to, you know, kill her. And she was being tortured to death, and her clothing was being shredded from this process, you, you can imagine. So what do you think she was doing while this was happening? She was trying to cover herself, the shreds of clothing, to keep herself covered. And even in the Cynic it says, even in the middle of her imminent death and torture and bleeding, her priority was to keep herself chaste and to preserve herself covered as being a temple of the Holy Spirit. In the middle of that, and in the middle of all that, while this is happening, she's doing this, like she's not thinking about that she's dying. Then she turned to her family and turned to the people, remain steadfast to God, remember Jesus Christ our Lord, and so on and so on. The devil wants to always divert the attention. But if I remind myself constantly of who I am and who I belong to, it becomes much easier to see his deception. Because it's a lie. He beautifies sin for you. He makes the temptation look irresistible. And yet, if you just go... Blow on it like that, it disappears. It's smoke. It's a, it's, a, it's a smoke show. It's nothing. It's a deception. Jonah reminds us of that here too. I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord God of heaven. So going back to the, 21, the, 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 the New Testament, 
or the early church and the martyrs and the saints of the early church, like St. Perpetua, St. Polycarp of Smyrna that we read about this morning, notice how every time they're in the middle of any form of imminent martyrdom, many saints, you've heard them say, even the martyrs of Libya, when ISIS was beheading them at the shores of the sea, what were they saying? I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Why do you keep saying I'm a Christian? We know you're a Christian. That's why we're killing you. That's not the point. You don't understand. I'm reaffirming who I belong to. I'm keeping my focus on who I belong to. So if you want to cut my neck, you want to burn me in the fire, you want to do whatever, do as you please. But at the end of the day, I'm a Christian. And since I'm a Christian, this means I belong to Christ. I have to remind myself of this truth. And I cannot um, rely on the fact that I have a cross tattooed to my wrist or I'm hanging a big cross around my neck or I'm wearing Christian clothing. That doesn't suffice. It has to be from inside out. I am a Christian, which meaning that I belong to Jesus. Whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not. But... It has to be from deep within. It can't be just an appearance. Appearances fade away. Trends go away. We see it all the time. Fashion. One day this is in, and then the next day this is out, and this is in. It's all appearances. Brands and watches and clothes, and that's why St. John reminds us, do not love the world, nor the things in the world. The world is passing away. All this stuff is passing away. But he who does the will of God is the one who's going to abide. It's not the one who's on the cover of the most popular magazines, fashion and car and you name it. All that is passing away. What a waste. What a waste for me to bow the knee to something that's passing away. I am a Christian. I have to think of the martyrs. Every time you're faced with temptation, think to yourself, I'm a Christian. I know who I belong to. Remember who you are. Remember who you belong to all the time. So I, St. Paul urges us and says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Put on the yoke of Christ and carry the cross with him, and he's carrying you with everything, rather than put on a yoke of bondage again. Why? I've been made free. I mean, if the truth has set you free, you shall be free indeed. That's what the Lord said. So if the truth sets me free. Why am I allowing myself to be entangled again into a yoke of bondage? I am a Christian. I know who I belong to. This is what I have to keep telling myself and reminding myself of. So we need to be warriors, not worriers. Worried about what people think, what's going to happen. What if this temptation is too tough? I'm afraid of tribulation. Worry, worry, worry. That's why last Sunday, do not worry. The Lord reminds us in last Sunday's gospel, do not worry. Do not worry. Be a warrior, not a worrier. Remember who you are. If you belong to Christ, what's there to worry about? As I say, Polycarp, the man is 86 years old, or how many years he's been. I've worshipped God for all these years. He's never done me harm. You want me to leave him now? After all these years, to, to worship you or to listen to you? Please. That's basically what he was saying. Remember who you are and whose you are. This is the only way to overcome temptation. Because if I belong to Christ and I remind myself of that fact and truth, I overcome. Because of the authority he's given me. Not because I'm stronger than the devil. God makes me stronger. That's it. Very simple. May God have mercy on us all. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, for thine is the glory forever. Blessed be the Father and the Son and the Holy the perfect Trinity, we worship Him and glorify Him. And so fast.